We just thank you this morning that when we come before you, you have given us the ability, almighty God, to create our atmosphere. We thank you, Father, that we created our, our atmosphere with our words. Father, we thank you that kings decree. Kings don't argue. Kings don't debate. Kings don't murmur. Kings don't whine. Kings don't complain. Kings don't gossip. King king's decree and father we thank you that our pen is as the ready writer and we thank you father god that the way you create the kingdom language and the kingdom posture is that we come to you with the righteous language we don't come to you whining we don't come to you crying we don't come to you complaining we don't come to you afraid we don't even come to you talking the problem 
We create our atmosphere. We create our world with our words. You are the daddy God. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And you said, be imitators of you like little children. So just like a little girl puts on a mother's pumps and a young boy pretends to shave or to be like his dad, you created us in Genesis 1:26 through 28 to be speaking spirits. Father, sometimes that's the very hardest thing for us to renew our mind to because we live in a world that's dictated by words and marketing and media and chatter chatter that's contrary that does not line up with the kingdom agenda so father we train our tongue the tongue father is a is a a, a deadly unruly member of the body it is the most unruly member the most undisciplined member of the body but father we command that tongue right now to be a kingdom tongue to be a righteous tongue for the righteous, the word declares, are as bold as a lion, and there is a language to the righteous. There is, a, there is an atmosphere of the righteous that they maintain and we guard and protect. So, Father, we come before you, and we thank you that we come boldly before the throne of grace. We obtain mercy. Father, we thank you that we come because of the righteousness of God, for your Son has made us to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And as this teaching goes forth this morning, and as we begin to make declarations this morning and create the atmosphere of our own life this morning, we thank you that you're watching us mimic you. You created the whole world with your words. So you're saying, I created my world with words. You create your world with words. I create my world with words. You create your world with words. We thank you it was not brick or mortar. It was not matter, space or time. It was words. The words brought forth the time, the words brought forth the matter, the words brought forth the space. And so Father, we thank you that the words create, words are not just for communication, but more for creation. The words are more for creation than they are communication. So right now, this morning, we recreate our atmosphere. We recreate our world. We believe in the power of the world, Tasavala. In the, he, in the Hebrew, in the very beginning, when you said God, said, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said, Tesavala means to execute. It means to fetch, to go and take it and fetch it as we see in Isaiah 55, 11. So shall your word be that goes forth out of your mouth. It accomplishes where you send it. It pleases you. It comes back saying missions accomplished. Tesavala means to execute, to adjudicate, to legislate. It means an executive order. It literally means to send out a executive order, to send out a decree, to, to execute, to fetch, to go forth, to send. So Father, we never think of when we're speaking that our words are sending, our words are going somewhere. Our words are on a mission somewhere. And Father, the more we become kingdom-minded, the more we become responsible believers, the more we have to guard our words. Like Job said, put your hand over your mouth. Help us to discipline our tongue. Help us to meditate and to think and to cause our tongue to be aligned with our thoughts and command our thoughts to be aligned with your word. It is a discipline. Father, we thank you that men of the kingdom and women of the kingdom, the generals, are people a few words. The generals are people who discipline their tongue. Loose lips sink ships. Loose lips sink ships. Help us to understand the power of our words, the creative ability of the tongue, and the power of creating our atmosphere by our words in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you that this is foundation one-on-one -on -one for the authority of the believer, that we create our world with our words in Jesus' mighty name. I'm excited to see is that Byron Meredith that I see on the phone, Apostle Meredith. I said, am I, am I seeing anything that is Apostle Meredith with us this morning? How blessed are we, man of God? Thank you to have you here with us this morning. We are decreeing over not just uh, our own life and our region and our territory and our state and our nation. We are decreeing over nations this morning. We are creating a conducive atmosphere, a conducive atmosphere for our 
finances, a conducive atmosphere for healing, a conducive atmosphere for our families and household salvation, a conducive atmosphere for our future, a conducive, conducive atmosphere for our nation. Some of you might have seen this uh, video that's been circulating around uh, from a particular choir saying we're coming after your children. Uh, Meredith, I don't know if I sent it to you, but I'll make sure I send it to you even as we speak right now. And we just decree and declare in the name of Jesus, just as bold as the enemy has been to openly say, we're coming after your children. We boldly say that our children are covered by the blood of the lamb. Our children are covered by the blood of the lamb and that no enemy, no demonic forces can have our children. We decreed this, we declared this, and we're going to find out, guys, in the times that we're living in, and the more we approach to the end of the church age, this is the greatest hour to be in the kingdom of God. But we're going to find out that there comes a great responsibility with when God says that he's pouring his spirit out among all flesh. When he says that the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea, there is a great responsibility that comes with the mandate that God has given us. And one of the greatest responsibilities that come with it as a believer that has to mature and grow up, mature and grow up, especially for those of us that are in leadership. One of the greatest responsibilities is learning how to guard our tongue, watch our tongue and the power of how we can recreate things just by our words. Immediately, let me just give you some scriptures as foundational scriptures to stand on, to go to so that you can have for the rest of the day. But um, as I give you these particular scriptures, I want us to also get ready to actually decree some things this morning. Just actually decree some things this morning. I wanna go to, I want you to, um, oh my gosh, there's so many, so many good places this morning. Let's start out with the authority of our tongue, the authority of the believer, the ability to the whole world, everything that your world is right now, everything about your life, everything about your bedroom, everything about your finances, everything about your house, everything about your weight, everything about everything in your life, they're all there because of choices. And those choices that you made started out the genesis, the genesis Oh my God, I feel like teaching this morning. The genesis of your thoughts, the genesis of your life, your choices, the genesis of your choices, the genesis of your choices, the origin, the bedrock, the origin of your choices, the trajectory that's a result of your choices, all proceed from your thoughts, which formed your words, which formed your choices, which formed your life. Can I say it again? The genesis of every outcome that you're facing started out with your thoughts that formed your words, that formed your choices, that formed your life. So we're going to rewind. How are we going to recreate this? How are we going to create an atmosphere that's conducive? We've got to change our thoughts, which change our words, which change our choices, which change our life, which means in reality, the authority of the believer, the discipline of the believer, the maturity of a leader and a believer. You cannot be in church and hear the word on Sunday and go out to dinner after Sunday, I mean, after church and gossip about leadership or complain about what's going on in the nation, in the world, or start letting your mouth openly discuss and talk about what's happening negative in your life or your finances or your health. It is a challenge. I know it's a serious discipline. Let's look at what the word tells us. In Matthew 28, 18, I want to paint this picture to you of God, the father, who is the king in his kingdom and God who gave you the authority of a believer, believer to reign and rule and judicate and execute and create and legislate and constitute everything in your own life. You're the ecclesia, the governing body of God. You are the restrainer. Look at the things he referred to us. You're a restrainer. You are the salt. You are the preserver. You are the light of the earth. Look at the type of responsibility that he gives us. And so how can you be given that heightened authority, that, res that type of authority without the responsibility of your tongue? The more you grow up, 
The more you become mature, the more authority that's delegated to you, the more you must be trusted by God with your tongue. I want to paint this picture that God says, I'm a king over my kingdom. I'm giving you your kingdom. Psalm 115, the heavens of heaven belong to God, but the earth belongs to the sons of men. Religion, <clears throat> religion still has us thinking. Religion still has people steeped into, and I know this is going to sound a little sacrilegious, but I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to microwave some sacred cows. Religion taught us, <clears throat> for many of us from the time we're in Sunday school, that we go to God and we cry out to God with our problems. So this is what you do. I'm going to correct that. He said, I'm a very present help in a time of trouble. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. All of this is true, but watch this. When we go to God about the situation, the righteous have to come a particular way. The Old Testament posture of coming to God when they were in trouble, because they had no authority over Satan. They had no authority as a believer. Man was in a fallen state. So all they can do is go and cry and whine and cry out to God. God doesn't turn a deaf ear to our cry. But at some point, God wants you to grow up and operate in a place like Jesus did with the disciples. When they came to him telling him that there wasn't food, he turned to them and he said, you feed them. Listen to what he says in Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and said to all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus came and said this to him, to them. Matthew 28, 18. Look at it with your own eyes this morning the English Standard Version, EST, ESV. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he turned around and gave that authority that he that had been given to him. He turned around and gave that authority to us. Watch this now in Luke 10, 19. God gave him the authority. And then in 10, 19, look at what he says. Look at it with your own eyes. Luke 10, 19, English Standard Version as well. Behold, I have given you, uh-oh, what are we gonna do with this? I have given you authority, not just to walk around with the authority, but then he's going to tell you what you can do with the authority to trade upon serpents, to trade upon scorpions. And watch this. What are we going to do with this? And over all the power of the enemy. What are you going to do with that? Over all the power of the enemy. Can you tell me anything that's void, any kind of demonic activity that's, that this does not cover? Uh, every principality, ruler of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, every hex, every vex, uh, the economy, uh, the, the political unrest, turmoil, uh, children acting crazy, the release of demonic principalities coming together, openly saying we're coming after your children and bold enough to say it openly. But guess what? The power of that demonic force declaring that openly, we have power over the enemy. We can right now decree, decree and declare that every last person in that video and every last person that aligns themselves with this agenda to pervert the minds of our children, to confuse the minds of our children concerning their identity and their orientation. We come before you in the name of Jesus and we say that there is a blood bought firewall around our children. There's a blood bought covenant around our children. You better go in here with me and stop sitting back there trying to be cute. Right now, if you have children, you have grandchildren. If you have nieces, if you have nephews, right now, open up your mouth that there's a blood bought right around our children. They will not be confused in their minds. They will not be swayed by their friends. They will not be pulled and lured by the internet. Father God, we decree that our children are blood bought and are, they are the seed of the righteous. Our children are the, say it out of your mouth, my child, my grandchild, my nieces, my nephew. If you got nieces, you got nephews. If you're auntie, if you're uncle, my grand, my nieces, my nephews or grand nieces and nephews. Val just had a grand niece. They are the seed of of the righteous decree it because kings decree then let's look over here in james 4 verse 7 it says submit yourselves therefore unto god resist the devil or and he will flee when you now submit yourself to god the enemy has to flee the enemy has to flee he has no choice this is the posture the mindset the language of the believer in proverbs 28 1 the bible says the wicked flee flee the the the, the flee the wicked flee though no one pursues them, but the righteous, as I said, are as bold as a lion. I love the comparison of these two things. The enemy always wants to make you think that he's the one chasing us. But watch this. The Bible says that the, the enemy 
is fleeing when no one is chasing him. But for us, we stand our ground and just continue to be as bold as a lion. This is real important right here. I want you to go to Jeremiah 112 right quick. I know I'm rolling through some things right quick, but I want you to put your eyes because he says, incline thy ear to my saying, keep the word in the midst of your heart. And listen to what he says as a lethal weapon. Let them not depart from your eyes. Sometimes we don't want to take the time. We're spiritually lazy. We let somebody confess the word to us, but we don't go put our eyes on the scripture. Why does Dr. Bailey keep telling you to put your eyes on the scripture? Put your eyes on the scripture. Put your So if God said, let it not depart from your eyes, then that means there's a polarized part of the brain that God has designed, which is the reason why they had the scriptures on the phylactery and it had it on their foreheads and on their forearm and on the doorpost. When they go in, when they come out, they, got to, they had to see it. They had to see it. They had to see it. There's something that polarizes in your mind when you yourself put your eyes on the word. When you yourself put your eyes on the scripture, you take a picture of it in your mind and is lodged in your mind. So in Jeremiah 1 and 12, then said the Lord to me, you have seen well for I'm alert and active and I watch over my word to perform it. So now watch this. If there's no word in our mouth, if our tongue is not speaking the word, you need to take that right there and meditate that all day. I watch over my word. I watch over my word. He's not performing your words. He's performing his words in your mouth. He performs his word in your mouth. That's why the Roman centurion said, speak the word only. I'm a man under authority. I say, go and people go. I say, come and people come. So watch this. He understood spiritual protocol he understood uh 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 uh, 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 uh let's say governmental authority he understood that he understood that and because he understood the protocol and the authority he was like you don't have to do anything speak the word only so now if you connect that over to jeremiah 112 i'm watching over my word to perform it how much of his word is in your mouth so now watch this a situation happens Calamity happens, political unrest happens, economic instability happens, sickness and disease coming against your body happens. All the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. What do you really do? I'm talking about myself as well. When you see the situation, are we quick to speak the situation or do we grab a hold? The quicker you can harness your mouth and harness your mind. You got to hear this is the sooner you're going to turn it around. But if you rehearse it and you nurse it and you disperse it and you don't reverse it and curse it, you're pulling fuel on the fire. And I know it's not easy. So this is what we do. We do have the authority to acknowledge the situation. But now watch this. This is hard. I didn't say this is easy. Once you acknowledge it openly, you go to God and say, Father, I thank you. This is the report. This is the situation, but I thank you. But what God really wants us to do, we keep talking to the problem, talking the problem to God, talking the problem to God. He wants us to talk God to the problem. I'm going to try to say that again so it can sink in. And it crucifies and it nullifies and it eradicates religious thinking because religion has taught us to cry out to God. But the righteous God, you don't cry out to God. You don't manipulate God. You don't, you don't, God ain't going to pity you. You go to God and you talk you thank God for the authority he's given you. You thank God that he's already given you all things to the life and godliness. Now, right now, this is going to expose the religious thinking right now, that bedrock religious thinking, like your mind is going to be like, what do you mean we don't go to God with the problem? We go to God thanking him for the solution. What do we do with the problem? You speak to the mountain. You speak to the mountain. You speak. You speak. You take authority. I got to give you some more scripture because I can feel the resistance coming all the way through the phone and all the way through the laptop. Let me help you again. In Jeremiah 5 and 12, they who lied about the Lord and said, he won't bother us, nor disasters will come upon us, that there will, there will be no war, no famine. Let's go, no, I'm sorry, wrong one. Jeremiah 5, 22, wrong one, sorry. Jeremiah 5, 22, not 12, I'm sorry. This is the New Living Translation. Have you no respect for me? Why don't you tremble in my presence? Now, listen to how God is talking. Meredith, look at this. Pastor Michael, Amy, look at this. He said, have you no respect for me? Why don't you tremble in my presence? I, the Lord, define oceans, the sand shorelines, as an everlasting boundary. 
that has waters that cannot cross the waves for I, and the waves that cannot toss and roar, but they can never pass the boundaries that I set for they have been given as a perpetual decree, the sand decrees to the ocean. Now you need to watch this because I'm taking us up higher. I'm taking us up higher. I know that your religious mind, a lot of y'all don't want to take this, but I'm taking you up higher. I'm trying to show you how to create an atmosphere. I'm trying to show you how to go into the midst of a war zone when the government is saying, the State Department is saying, evacuate Americans out. And God speaks, says, go into Kuwait, go into Sudan, go into Haiti, go into Syria, go into uh, Togo, Cotonou, go into the demonic capital, go say in front of the chief, you may be a chief, but you are not the chief. Why? Because we are given a perpetual decree. We are the sand. They may look like the ocean. The ocean makes a lot of noise. The ocean is deep. The ocean is vast. The ocean has power, but the ocean does not have power over one pebble of sand. When that tide comes to the shore, it hits the sand and it makes a line in the sand, a line in the sand, a line. You've been to the beach, you've seen it. That line you see in the sand that the water leaves is called by God a perpetual decree. And listen to what he says. I set that boundary. So the sand says to the ocean, you better bow down. The sand says to the ocean, don't touch this. So what God is showing, it may look like all of this stuff is happening around. And the tendency, I'm trying to tell you, the immature tendency, it happens to all of us. Think about when the pandemic first happened. All of, for, for the first beginning part, all we were talking about was the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem. And God says, come up in your thinking. You never find Jesus. I challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge you to watch the words of Jesus. You never see Jesus going around talking about the problem. Study it from Matthew all the way to his ascension. He's only giving solutions. When they say there is no food, you feed them. Oh, we can't pay taxes. Go get the fish with the corn in his mouth. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Every single thing, the woman that was at the well, he said, she talking about you kind of how you're going to draw the water. He said, if you knew what water, who, who this is you're speaking to, he brought her immediately to the solution with the tax situation. He brought them immediately to the solution when there was no food to feed. He brought them immediately to the solution. We don't know how to be solution driven and solution disciplined with our tongue. We've been trained to teach, teach the spark, speak the problem. So the family gets around the dinner table. And the whole family, all of us, start talking the problem, talking the problem. So what the enemy is saying, come on, come on, keep on speaking it. Come on, baby, bring it on, bring it on. Keep on speaking it because every time you speak it. Now, remember, in the realm of the kingdom, the kingdom world is an unseen world. The kingdom world is not a tangible world. The kingdom of God cannot be observed with the physical eye. The Bible tells us that in Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of God cannot be observed with the physical eye. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is righteousness. Uh-oh, that means the way you speak the way you stand the way you think your posture with god you're bold you're you you're confident that you're the righteousness of god in christ jesus that is the kingdom of god so it cannot be seen now remember in the kingdom that unseen kingdom satan can only pervert he cannot create he hates that you have the ability to create words he can't he can only parrot he can only twist words he can only pervert he cannot create he has no elohim the creative side of god on the inside of him he doesn't possess it he lost it when he was evicted out of heaven so remember he perverts everything so there's a trinity with god the father the son the holy spirit then the trinity with satan is satan the false prophet and the antichrist all throughout everything that you see him do he perverts he wickers he wicked he twists so if jeremiah tells us god watches over his words to perform them what do you think satan does satan says aha uh -huh. That's right. I was with him from the beginning. This whole thing was created. Everything in heaven spoke. Everything in heaven aligned with God's agenda. I'm the one that rebelled. I'm the one that started speaking words that rebelled. I will ascend my throne above the most. I will ascend. So he began to speak words out of his mouth that were contrary to heaven's agenda. And the moment you speak words out of your mouth that are contrary to heaven's agenda, you are evicting something. You are, the moment he did that rebellion, was found in him, rebellion began to go throughout the heaven through a fourth of the angels like a pandemic because rebellious words 
were spoken that came from rebellious thoughts, I will ascend. So he can only pervert. So the Bible says God watches over his word to perform it. So he's waiting for your words. Satan is waiting for your words. And every time you keep speaking the problem, speaking the problem, speaking the problem. And I know it's not easy, but you got to speak to the mountain and you speak to the problem. You don't speak the problem. You speak to the problem. Did you all get that? We've been speaking the problem instead of speaking to the problem. I hope you're getting this. Instead of speaking the problem, you speak to the problem. So as you speak to the problem, you tell the problem what it has to do. You tell scarcity, I do not receive you, I command abundance. You speak to the mountain, you cast it into the sea. You speak to the political instability, you speak to the turmoil, you speak to the chaos and you speak peace to turmoil. You speak abundance to scarcity. You speak healing to sickness. Are y'all seeing this this morning? Instead of saying my arthritis, my problem, this is what's going on. We're too programmed and wired to speak the problem instead of speaking to the problem. What do we do to God about the problem? You mean to tell me I can't tell God about my headache? You mean to tell me I can't tell God? No, you go to God and you say to God, I thank you for healing me. I'm coming to you as righteous, not as an Old Testament person, but a New Testament believer that knows their redemptive realities, that we have a higher level of responsibility for behold, you gave us all power. You gave us all authority. You said, you fix it. You speak to it. You do it. You change it. You use your words like I use my words. You create your world like I create my world. I don't have anything else to give you. I've already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I've given you my word. I've given you my blood. I've given you my name. I've given you my authority. I've given you my spirit. You have everything to turn your situation around. You have everything. Because if you keep running to me, and not understand that it's the father through you. It's me in you, the hope of glory. It's my authority in you. When you start getting confidence that it's him in you, it's him through you, it's him speaking through you, it's him eradicating the problem through you, then you gain more confidence. And the enemy starts realizing, no matter what I do to touch that girl, she's going to keep walking in her authority. She's not afraid of me. And the enemy starts realizing you are forced to be reckoned with because you can create your world. You finally waken up to the true, 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 true discipline that I create my world. I create my atmosphere. My tongue really is the pen of a really ready writer. My words really do create my world. I am really given a perpetual decree. I may look like the sand, but according to the, the decree of God, and the authority of God, I've been given as a boundary to the ocean. I now watch my words so God, I can put God's word in my mouth so God can watch over his word to perform it because kings don't complain. Kings decree. I want you to even think about every type of high order political leader that you know that's operating, really more from a royalty perspective. When there are challenges in England, the queen does not come before her subjects and say, oh, it's so bad. The whole place is going down. We don't know what we're going to do. Oh, my goodness. The pandemic is there. No. When you do that, that shows a lack of authority and a lack of confidence and a lack of power. You stand before the people and you come before your nation and you give them the solution. This is what we're going to do. We're deploying the military. We're going to send this over here. We're going to send aid there. They don't come there saying, oh my God, it's so bad. These many people are starving. And this many people, no, 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 no. We operate on a higher level. We come with a solution. What is the solution? The word of God. For the heavens of heaven belong to God, but the earth is he given to the sons of men. And I know it's a discipline because the tendency of the flesh, the tendency of what you see is to speak what you see and to speak the problem instead of speaking to the problem. So we speak right now to South Africa and we command peace in South Africa. We command in the name of Jesus for the pandemic 
that's trying to spread throughout South Africa, different regions. We speak and say in the name of Jesus, the same th that they're speaking over our nation. They're saying that a third wave has already hit here and that the Delta has been found in 50, 50 states already. Well, we take the words that they've spoken and we speak to the situation. We speak to the mountain and we say in the name of Jesus that no plague will come near our dwelling place. And no matter matter how hard it is and no matter how much pressure is on our tongue and no matter how much pressure is for us to speak against the situation, uh, speak negative or to speak the problem, we hold our tongue captive. We rule the unruly member and say no plague, no plague, no plague comes near our dwelling place. I know people are going to think you're crazy, but you got to speak the solution. You got to speak the solution. And the moment you release the solution into the atmosphere, words are eternal. Words never die. Words suspend. They circulate over and over and over every word spoken has never died for his words are spirit and they are life so now once you speak the word you give him something to watch over it to perform it so right now you need to begin to open up your mouth and speak the word over your finances and speak the word over your health and speak the word over your nation we push the plague back in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we say no plague near our dwelling place we decree in the name of Jesus that what God is blessed no man can curse our household is blessed our nation is blessed we thank you father God that we dispatch legions of angels, Father God, on our behalf. We dispatch our angels in the name of Jesus to go forth and to do bidding and to execute the will of God in the earth. We release the angels of God over South Africa. We release the angels of God over Namibia. We release the angels of God over America. We decree a perpetual decree in the name of Jesus. We command in the name of Jesus every type of high-ranking force that is needed to push back the turmoil of the enemy. We decree it in the name of Jesus. And Father, now we turn to you now that we've spoken to the problem, now that we've spoken to the situation, we now turn to you and we say this, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that you are our King and our God and you've given us all power and all authority has been given unto us in your name for we tread upon serpents and scorpions. Father, we come to you as royalty and we speak the solution and we thank you for the solution and we thank you that it's a finished work and we thank you that it's turning around and we thank you that there is peace and we thank you that not another ounce or moment of the enemy's or, 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 or tactics and his hex and his vex and his schemes shall rule and reign over us for you have given us authority. We thank you for that authority. We thank you that we didn't choose you, that you chose us. We thank you that we didn't appoint you, you appointed us. We thank you that we didn't find you, you found us. And you ordained us to go forth and bring fruit that will remain. Help us, almighty God. We come before you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for helping us. We thank you for helping us to be more disciplined with our tongue. Holy Spirit, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are our helper. Help us to see ourselves as the authority of the believer. Help us to begin to walk in our door dominion mandate. Help us to begin to think and speak and think and speak and think and speak like royalty, like authority, like we have dominion. Let us walk in our dominion mandate. Let us speak our dominion mandate. Let us speak the language of dominion. Let's speak the dominion language. We decree we are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We have the peace of God that garrisons and rules and reigns around our heart in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we speak peace to our nation. We speak peace to the streets. We speak peace to our body, shalom, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking. We speak wholeness. We speak uh, no scarcity. We speak abundance. We speak direction. We are not confused. We speak clarity. We speak in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We believe it. We don't paticate around with this patty cake around with this. We're not schizophrenic. We're not schizophrenic. We're not spiritual schizophrenic people where we speak one thing and do another. For we say it, we lock it in, we lock it in. And from this moment, we thank you that it's turning. We thank you that it's turning. We thank you that help is coming from the sanctuary. We thank you that angels have been deployed. We will not speak the problem. We will not. Somebody need to open up their mouth this morning and say on this Monday morning, this is a constitutional day of your life. It is the independence day of your spiritual walk. You are being elevated to another place that from this day, the Holy Spirit will help you to not speak the problem, but speak to the problem and to turn to God and thank him 
for the solution. Open up your mouth and say, I will not speak the problem. Say it again. I will not speak the problem. Say it behind me, Yolanda. I will not speak the problem. Again. Again, I will not speak the problem. I will speak the solution and the solution only. And I will turn to God and thank him for the solution. No pressure on my tongue to speak the problem. But I discipline my tongue. I discipline my mind. Speak the solution. Speak the word. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. And thank God for the solution in the name of Jesus. Are you seeing this this morning, guys? And let me tell you something. We get ready to see some things released in the earth. If you don't master this elementary thing that I'm telling you, when I needed that $180,000 in 10 days, I had to speak the solution. I had to call it in. I had to keep speaking it. I had to keep saying it. I had to keep seeing it. I had to keep believing it. I had to close my eyes and say it and see it and believe it and say it and see it. It was such a hard, easy pressure to speak what I didn't have to speak the problem. If I spoke the problem, just remember, remember we have what we say, how stupid we've been. We have what we say. Satan knows that you have what you say. So he keeps wanting you to be unruly, undisciplined with your tongue. Some people will open up their mouth and say anything. So opinionated, they'll say anything. Don't harness their tongue because knowing the lethal weapon of the tongue, how powerful that tongue is, it can set on fire the course of nature, but it also can create an entire world. God said, Tessabala, it go fetches. It go brings what I need. So why would I waste my words and speak a problem? Because if I could see, remember, you're created in God's image and his likeness. You have an authority. Your words pack power. You can't take that away. So that's why you have to be responsible for your words. So you're going to take the authority that you got to create the solution and you're going to be stupid and take the authority created in the image of God instead of doing and mimicking God what you see God do, create the world that he wants. You're going to take your tongue and create what Satan wants. You're using your tongue to create what Satan wants? You're using your tongue to push Satan's agenda in your own life against you? How stupid. When all you got to do is discipline your tongue and create your atmosphere. So we speak in the name of Jesus over nations. That's why we speak to nations. We say Jesus is Lord over America. Jesus is Lord over Namibia. Jesus is Lord over South Africa. We speak peace. We speak peace. We speak shalom. We speak nothing missing, nothing lacking. We speak the will of God be done. Let your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Thank you that your will is done on earth. Thank you that the heavens of heaven belong to God and the earth belongs to the sons of men. Thank you that you've given us authority. Thank you that you made us kings and priests. Thank you that we're seated with you at the right hand of the Father. Thank you, Father God, that from this day, help us put a check and our hand over our mouth when we start whining to you about the problem instead of coming to you and saying, thank you. I know like a baby, we want to always whine and say, oh God, this is what happened to me. Instead of saying, Father God, I brace myself up and I square back my shoulder. David said, why so downcast, oh my soul? Hope is thou not in God? He said to Jeremiah, don't you have any respect for me? Don't you reverence me? Can't you see the perpetual decree? Why are you not reverencing me? Why don't you fear me? Why don't you have any respect for me? What is he saying is, why don't you follow the perpetual decree? Why are you not acknowledging the perpetual decree? Why do you keep coming to me whining and complaining like a baby instead of saying, thank you. You've given me already everything I need. I have everything I need. Ooh, 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 ooh. You got everything you need. And Satan wants you to keep acting like a baby, whining. Oh, God, what are we going to do? Just like the prophet, I'm the only one. He says, sit up and shut up and get yourself together. I got 7,000 haven't bowed to bill. You better learn how to open up your mouth and walk in your authority. What did my son die for? What did I give you my word for? Do you know people gave their lives so we can have a Bible? What did, I, what did, what did they do all of this for? What was the blood spilled out for? If you're not going to walk in your authority. Because you can't train your tongue. Because you can't train your tongue. 
You're going to be defeated in life because you can't train your tongue. You can't train your thoughts to say, I speak over my nation. I speak over these streets. I speak over my finances. I speak over my health. I speak to the problem. And I thank God for the solution in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody say amen this morning? We, we have fallen for the okie doke. We have fallen for the okie doke. He already told you, you have what you say. You don't have what you pray. You don't have what you can, you have what you say. So why would you take something so sacred as the only species on the planet that can create words and you spit in the face of God by using your words to fuel Satan's agenda. And then you do it over your children and then you speak it over your finances and then you speak it over your body and then you speak it over your nation. So all Satan got to do is start pushing buttons and making all kinds of things happen. <laughs> things all go, and, all, and more things just get out of control. All the, the Bible says all of the foundation of the earth is out of course. He already told you that. Why does the heathen rage? Psalm 2, 1. He already told you that. They rage because they don't know God. You don't speak the problem. You're sent here on earth to be the salt, to be the light, to be the restrainer, to be the solution. How the solution going to run around? The national guard show up and say, oh, oh, look, oh it looks so bad. What are we going to do? No, you're the national guard to be a peacekeeper, to bring a solution, to protect, to bring resolve. We're the army of the almighty God. We're sent here to rule, to reign, to adjudicate, to execute. To, and then he says this, what you allow, I will allow. What you say, I will back. What you speak out, I'll watch over my word to perform it. But I'm not performing your word. I'm only going to perform my word. Let me hear from you, Apostle Meredith, and then Pastor Mike, we're coming to you. And Tanya looked like she's pretty excited about this this morning. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Bailey. What an awesome, awesome word. I was thinking... Um, you were talking in Psalm 103, verses 19 and 20. The Bible says that the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. But the very next thing it says in verse 20, it says, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The power in that, Doc, is that when you talk about hearkening, it's a two-part word. Hearkening means to hear but it also means to do. Mm -hmm. So when we speak his word, there's a command that goes forth. And the beauty of this is that when angels hear, the Bible says that they hearken unto the voice of his word. How does God's word get a voice? It gets a voice when we decree it, when we declare it. And the angels do not try to disseminate or distinguish between who's speaking because someone of royal status is speaking that word. And because the father, as you said, has given us authority. Once we declare that word, the angels don't try and figure out who's talking. All they know is that a royal decree has gone forth and they have to move on our behalf. So I think it's a powerful thing when Jesus was talking in, in Luke 10 and 19, when he says that, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy. He says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When he first says power, he's talking about the Greek word exousia. Exousia means authority. So Jesus is saying, behold, I give unto you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And the second time he uses the word power, he uses the word dunamis, which means the ability, supernatural ability even. So he's given us authority over all the ability of the enemy but how do we release authority in the kingdom authority in the kingdom is always released by way of decree and that's why the bible says where the word of a king is there is power so when we speak we release that authority angels move on our behalf and this is literally how we frame our world wow God. wow that you know that thing is so powerful what you're saying because in the hebrew language um the that goes to show you that from a child, they didn't have the disadvantage of the English language. In the Hebrew language from a child, 
to hearken, that word we say in English is hearken, but for them it's simply the word what we would use as to hear. To them, there's no separation of hearing and doing. It's a combined concept, hearing, doing, hearing, doing, and God trained them that way so that they would obey what he says. So, so just think in all your life from the time you were a child, the definition of the word hear means hear and do, hear and do, hear and do. That's all you knew. There was no separation of two separate concepts like it is in the English language. But wow. so that means that from a child, the moment you hear God's word, you're wired to what? Do it, do it. And that's why he says, if you're a hearer of word and not a doer of the word, you're deceiving yourself. One translation says you're killing yourself. So from a child, they've been teaching the child hear and do, hear it. Well, it's not even hear and do, hear, do. It really was, it would be in the mind like this, hear, do, hear, do. Not hear and do, because that's two separate concepts. Hear, do. Hear, do. Hear, do. So that's all they know. That's all they know. And so how wired, how rewired our mind must be to follow what he says. And then that verse that they're waiting, we hearken. He's waiting on our, how does his voice go into the earth? That's powerful. If we don't speak it, his voice is not in the earth. Pastor Michael, we're coming to you. This this thing had to stir it up. I'm looking at what you share from Matthew 28 and 18, um, but I want to go to 19 where he says, "Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations." But what's so key is is Jesus talks about authority before he says go. Mm. But before he even tells us to go, he's teaching us about authority, mm. which means authority is important to understand before we go make mm. disciples of nations. And then I'm coming down now to what Apostle uh, Mer Meredith was, was saying, um, that with the exousia and the dunamis, the, uh, the exousia is authority, the dunamis is the ability. And I praise God that we've been living here in Namibia for these 10 years because I've learned something from the banking system that I would not have learned in the States. <clears throat> the way the way our accounts are, are work here is that we have a, our administrator will put in the bills into the banking system. But in order for the payment to happen, my wife has to authorize it or reject it. So, 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 so let me bring this into to our understanding right here is Satan can put in so much stuff, but because we're the authority, either we're going to authorize what he puts in or we reject it. Wow. And, and it's, it's such a powerful thing when you think about authority is that, that Jesus got the keys. He got the authority. He gives it back to us by saying, go therefore in my authority, which means either we're going to authorize what Satan wants to do or we reject it. Satan can only do what we authorize. And so there are a lot of people getting beat up by Satan and blaming Satan for this and that, where they need to really be blaming themselves because they're the one authorizing it, like you're saying, with their mouths, allowing uh, uh, what Satan wants to do in their lives to come to pass. But it's our responsibility to reject, hear me, to reject every lie every deceitful idea, everything that Satan is trying to put in our minds, in our lives, is our responsibility to reject it. And when we reject it, that means it doesn't have access to anything in, in our lives because we, uh, we authorize what God has authorized mm -hmm. in our lives. Wow. So even though he's trying it until you sign for the package, it's still, you know, he don't still have full authority. And, and every time we speak, we open up our mouth, as you're saying, as we open up our mouth and license him, we license him to have havoc in our life when we open up our mouth and validate it and authorize, we sign for the package with our tongue. Wow, Tanya, I know you're over there. I'm ready to hear from you, Tanya. Thanks, Pastor Mike. That's powerful. I mean, you lit this up this morning, Auntie Pat. I think for me, my perspective is coming from the kids. Um, I think you, when you were sharing on the um, the formulation of the genesis of how something manifests and framing our worlds with our words, um, 
you mention thoughts and words and choices and it, it determines your life and that's a confession that i make with our children um that i will i will mind my thoughts my thoughts will mind my actions my actions my behavior my behavior my character and it is so important for us to establish that in our children because like you said the enemy is out on the prowl mm-hmm. but I, my, my thing is if we can't as children of god obey the order and instruction of minding our thoughts how can we teach that mm-hmm. the bible tells us to diligently teach our children how to love but if we're not doing it first then we can't establish that um foundation in our children and so it is so pivotal for us all those who are out there as you mentioned parents grandparents great aunts great mm-hmm. uncles whatever your capacity is as it pertains to helping to frame the worlds of the children around we have to first um obey and i loved love loved what you expressed lastly about hearing and doing how it's synonymous like you can't do one without the other and mm-hmm. that is something that we have to um re rebrand our ourselves into mm-hmm. doing you know the bible tells us to be you know um to be doers of the word and not hearers only in mm-hmm. other words when you hear do when you mm-hmm. do hear like mm-hmm. it can't be um two separate um mm-hmm. shelf mm-hmm. items they have to mm-hmm. when you pick it up it has to to be the mm-hmm. the water um what is it the, the water with the wet the water with mm-hmm. the wet mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. and and i feel like i mean as a especially as a parent um it's 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 an it's an ex, it's an example set before me every day of how god wants us to be because we're constantly telling our children you know do as i say not as i do or you know this is what i'm telling you to do but first you have to set the example of how you want it done i mean when i was cleaning the other day that i was like kids clean up and I had to come back. I said, this is not how I clean. Let me show you, Mm -hmm. you know? So there's this activation that is constant and it's a perpetual um, decree that you are saying it has to be constant. We cannot now more than ever, but we cannot back off of our confession and um, you know, the authority that we possess with our words. So this was awesome. And that discipline of we're going to land the plane with this one, that discipline of not speaking the problem. That's what this whole role was created for this morning because watch this guys, we're going to see some crazy stuff in the earth. The enemy is shooting his best shot. We've got to harness our tongue and the moment, like, I mean, I've been around some of these generals like Billy Joe Daugherty. I've seen these guys do this. I've seen these guys, I've seen Creflo do it. I've seen Pastor Winston do it. I've seen Apostle Price do it. I've seen them. I've seen them when it's a problem or a situation. I've seen the discipline of their tongue. I'm like, oh, my God, Lord, help me get to that place. That the moment they hear it, they immediately release that word quickly. And if you stop and think about it, I realize what they're doing because the quicker you can get the word out, the quicker you can speak the word instead of the problem, the quicker you can speak the word instead of the problem, you immediately put the word on the matter immediately and that's why when satan came to jesus and he started bringing them temptations what did jesus do he put the word on it quickly for it is written it is written he didn't just start having a dialogue with the devil like well what if i really eat well you don't tell me what to do who are you he said no he spoke the word only and he was the word speaking the word so if the word had to speak the word who do you think you are if the word who had to speak the word who do you think you are the word had to speak the word to deal with satan the word had to speak the word to deal with the problem god had to speak the world the word to create the world then who are we we've got to speak the word your words have no problem no power no power no authority your own words but his word in your mouth he will watch over it to perform it i just want to see right now by a show of hands and we speak the word over South Africa. We speak the word over America. We speak the word over whatever nation you're you are from on this on this in this room. We speak the word over your finances. We speak the word over your health. We speak the word over your choices. We speak the word over your relationships. We say concerning your finances, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We decree that you will buy and sell with no money. We decree that no good thing will he withhold from you as you walk uprightly. We decree that wealth and riches shall be in your house. We speak the word over your body that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. He himself bore every infirmity on his own body. 
body and by his stripes you were healed. We speak over your body. He sent his word to heal you. We speak over your relationships that God governs and he covers your relationships. We decree that you have healthy relationships in the name of Jesus. We decree that you will walk together in agreed relationships because the Bible Amos says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? So we speak of agreement and unity in relationships. We speak over your children that they are the seed of the righteous. We speak over your future. It is bright as the noonday sun and it shines brighter and brighter. We speak over your future that he knows the thoughts he thinks of you, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to a good future and an expected end, a prosperous end in Jesus name. How many of you today by the show of hands, just raise your hand if you're willing to do this, that from this teaching you heard this morning, you're going to set as a constitution in your inner core, in the bedrock part of your belief system. You're going to, from this day saying, I will from this day set myself to discipline my tongue to speak the word only or speak to the problem and not the problem. Speak the word to the problem. Speak the word. If that's you right now, show God, show God, show God. Raise your hand. I got, I'm going to, I realize I need to start speaking the word. When I hear problems, I start getting worried. I hear problems. I start speaking the problems. Now go tell somebody that's a problem. I can't say that I really speak the word first. I can't say that I speak the word to the problem. But from this day, I want to be, listen to the, the appeal. I want to be more disciplined to speak the word only. I'm not going to bring you to the stage. This is what you're doing in the realm of the spirit before God. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand by clicking the thing and saying, God, I will speak. I want to be more disciplined. I will speak the word. I got my hand raised. I want to speak the word only. I want to be more disciplined to hunt. And it's not easy to discipline myself to put this ruling member of the tongue to speak the word quicker. The moment I hear it, to be quicker to speak the word, to do like Jesus immediately when I hear it, speak the word. Immediately, and I'm creating my world with my words and atmosphere that's conducive for God to watch over that word and perform it. I decree peace in the name of Jesus. I decree abundance in in the name of Jesus. I decree healing in the name of Jesus. Now, once we speak it, you got your hands raised. Guess what you got to do? This is the hard part. One part, part of the coin is to speak the word only and not speak the problem because it's harder. You know, it's easy to just say what you see. It's easy to say what you see. It's easy to say what you see. But Karnitha keeps speaking the word to the problem. And then from that moment, here's the challenging part. I'm not going to say hard, but say a bit challenging. Watching my own words. To say, Father, I thank you. I thank you because gratitude deals with your whole attitude. I thank you for the solution. I thank you that there's peace. I thank you that there's no unrest. I thank you that the plague is eradicated, is nullified, is crushed, it is it's dismantled. It shall not come near my dwelling place. I mean, you've got, and the more you keep speaking the word and 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 you keep speaking the word, speaking the word it's going to change your perspective. It's going to change your situation and an atmosphere will not be conducive for God to birth the solution in Jesus' mighty name. Do we have one other person in the audience that just may want to come up and say, man, I got something out of this. This is, I'm, I'm making a constitution. You need to write this down. So this is not just something in your household, Jay, decree it. Kranitha, just keep speaking the word to the problem, speaking the word to the problem. Professor, I want to make sure that you come back on later and get this word. He might've hopped off already to go over to Francina's room, but I want to make sure that he gets this word this morning. Uh, for those of you that missed the beginning of it, you can go back and you can get it on um you can get it on Facebook. You can get it later on Facebook. Anybody else right quick this morning before we hop off? I want to let those in that in case anyone has anything they want to comment or say or, you know, what this word meant to you this morning, what you got out of it this morning. Anybody raise your hand, bring them to the stage, Erica, right quick. Okay. So I just reset the hand raising. Um, have one person coming up. Um, if you want to come up to the stage, go ahead and raise your hand. The uh, hand raising is back on. Hi, Benny. Welcome to the stage. I think this is the first time we've seen you in the room. Welcome. Do you have a question or comment? Again, after a very long time. I don't know if you still remember me. It's breaking up. We can't hear you, dear. Uh, Dr. Perrett. Dr. Patricia, this is Benny Prasad from Bangalore. Oh. And I was so blessed to hear your voice. 
And I was so blessed to hear the message that just come this evening. And um, I'm, I'm so blessed and beyond what I can ever think of. And this was so apt for me today. Wow. And nice to hear your voice again after a very long time. Is this the guitarist? That's right. Wow. I got it. In Oman in 2002. Yes, I got to tell Yolanda. Yolanda still has the picture. Hey, Yolanda, are you there? <laughs> We still have it. We still we still have the picture. We looked at it. We looked at it not too long ago. <laughs> thank you. I'll send the other pictures on uh, Instagram. But thank you, thank okay. you very much. I was so blessed. Okay, God bless you, and my love to you. My love to you. Next person. Thank. Hi, Richard. Um, welcome to the stage, and welcome to Clubhouse. I see you have your party hat. Go ahead and open your mic for your comment or question. Elsie, I'm coming to you in just a moment. Richard, if you go ahead and click on your mic at the bottom right, you can go ahead and speak. Okay, we'll come back to Richard. Elsie, go ahead. Elsie, you can go ahead and speak now. Hi, um, I'm new here and I'm, I'm happy I'm here. I want to say hi to everybody this morning. <laughs> um, I must say that I just quickly joined and the, the message I heard really inspired me a lot. I mean, um, I really heard that we should speak the positive, we should speak the solution, we shouldn't speak the problem. And I, my nine year old boy, has a has an issue with um not speaking the truth and sometimes taking money to buy petty petty stuff so i spoke to a counselor i engaged the work of a counselor who came home to counselor was asking how my boy was doing then because i've heard the word this morning instead of usually i'll say oh oh the, the bless her heart she got knocked off I'll see if I can get her back. Okay, Wendy, welcome to the stage. Go ahead and open your mic. What's your question or comment? Wendy, are you there? Okay, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Billy. I got to tell you, I'm um, you know, new to the clubhouse and totally enjoy the experience. And um, your message was so timely. I was uh, in my prayer closet and your message just aligned itself um, with, you know, uh, watching your mouth. And I am just overjoyed by um, this, uh, this message uh, this morning. And I wanted to say that, you know, just even having the opportunity to talk to you right now is awesome because when I first um, learned of you, I said, oh my goodness, she does missions in Jamaica. My family, mother and father, now deceased, deceased brother, is um, they were Jamaican. And um, I just hope to have the opportunity to work with you um, on that mission um, whenever you know you decide to go back uh, and in the Caribbean islands in general. So I just thank you for the message. That's all I really wanted to say. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Well, my, we have Jamaican roots in our family and uh, yeah, we've been coming every year as soon as things will probably be resuming 2022. Okay. 2022 will be resuming. We take teams in every single year. Well, uh, Erica, I think if Elsie came back and then we're going to hop on off. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Elsie, did you want to finish? I think you had gotten that off. Elsie, are you, excuse me, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. You want to go ahead and finish what you were saying? Yes, I was saying that the, the, the message I heard this morning about speaking positive into the situation, it's, it's, it's really helped me this morning. morning because I had to um, give a report about my son to his um, the, the counselor. And instead of, I, I will usually say, oh, David is still the same. David is still not speaking the truth. David is still this and that. But I just said, no, David is getting better, I believe. And 
the counselor said yes i also believe he's getting better and i just felt that that is that is the word i need to speak into his life every day even if he keeps doing the wrong thing i will just tell him i know you are changing i know you are a good boy i know you are not this and, and you're not this and that and that is what god actually taught us and when he saw darkly he spoke light exactly when he saw sickness he spoke healing exactly and that is what we have to do as christians we will not talk about the, the problem anymore. Uh, I said, not, not, not talk about my problems anymore. I will talk about the solution. I will and, and, and sweetheart, what you need to do, solution. listen, darling, what you need to do is to get David to say it. Get David to say, I speak the truth and I will not lie. I speak truth only. And just don't get him to say that he speaks true. Get him to say it out of his mouth because possession, confession will bring possession into his own life. You know? Yeah. I keep my mouth from telling yeah. lies. I speak, I love life and I want to see good days. Therefore, I will keep my tongue from evil yeah. and my tongue from telling lies. That's the scripture, okay? And let him start saying yeah. it every day. So I speak truth. Okay, we're gonna, I thought I saw Eunice up here. Oh, Eunice, right quick, and then we're gonna go. Or did, did Elsie get a chance ever to say anything, Erica? Did Elsie drop? Elsie speaking. Okay, thank you, Elsie. Eunice, and then we're gonna drop. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Elsie. Where are you from, Elsie? I'm from Ghana. Uh huh. Where are you? Are you calling from Ghana? I mean, are you on the room from Ghana? Yes, please. Okay, blessings. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Richard is also my friend from Ghana. Oh. I invited him. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, we've been to your country many times. We've dug wells, done all kind of work, scholarship students from your from your country, done quite a bit of work in Ghana. Okay, Eunice. Wow, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Eunice. Yes, Dr. Pat, I have on YouTube Barbara Span, and she wants to let you know that she thanks you so much for that reminder. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you so much, Barbara. We also to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. We don't want to leave you out. We're going to find a way just like Eunice did this morning. Thank you so much for your innovation, Eunice, to start getting some words and some comments from those off of Facebook and Instagram so that you don't have to sit in silence. We can hear your voice as well. We'll find some kind of way to make that work. Thank you so very much. Okay, guys, I trust that you were blessed. We right now speak over. We speak peace. We speak peace to South Africa. We stay the plague. We command the plague and the virus to die in the name of Jesus. We command the numbers to go down. We command the spread to cease, not only in South Africa, but in America as well as in UK. We decree in the name of Jesus that we are the head and not the tail and we are above and not beneath. We decree in the name of Jesus for everybody in this room, everybody on Facebook, everybody on Instagram, everybody on YouTube. We will speak the word only. We will speak the word only. We will speak the word for Jesus. He is Lord. Jesus, he is Lord. We declare that Jesus is Lord over our words. We decree that Jesus is Lord over our decisions. We decree that Jesus is the one that gives us the power to create the atmosphere that we will not go to him about the problem. We will begin to thank him for the solution. We thank you, almighty God. We thank you, almighty God. We thank you, almighty God. It is with thanksgiving that we thank you for the solution. We thank you for the peace in South Africa. We thank you, we thank you, no matter what this is, we want to speak to We thank you that nations are open. We thank you that the will of the Lord is done in the earth. We thank you. Thank you. And we bless your name, Father. We bless your name, O God. In Jesus' name. All we have needed, your hand has provided. And so we thank you for your provision in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to let everybody know that it's in the room today and on Facebook and on YouTube uh, and Instagram. We need volunteers. We'd love to have you to be a part of our team. If you'd like to volunteer on any level, please make sure you go to patriciabailey.org 
and just leave a message there or the quickest way is to send me a message on Instagram. I'd like to be a part of the team. I can give one hour a month or one hour a week or whatever. I This is the skill set I have on Instagram, or on Facebook. Please leave me a message. If you're interested in going to South Africa, we have teams that are going all into the month of October and September. So don't, don't let what you see bother you. The, the guys, what we will, we decree a perpetual decree for a complete turnaround that not only uh, South Africa, but London and other parts will open back up that this wave that they're trying to say that's coming our way as well will not shut us down. We turn it around with our words. We turn it around with our words. We call the nation healed. We call the nation whole in Jesus mighty name. So if you go to patriciabailey.org and you fill out the information there, also those of that would like to partner with us, we are thanking God for some of the most incredible people that we have on our team. We are history makers and world changers. And man, we would love to change nations together with you because I believe we are better together. How can you partner with us? Simply go to patriciabailey.org and you'll see that we've been doing missions in 147 countries. We've been in 147 countries and have been doing this for nearly 43 years. So we thank God. We'd love to have you on our team. And we believe again, like I said, that we are better together. It's not so much you uh, partnering with us for what you can do to support us, but how we can pour back into your life. What comes along with partnership? We call you, we pray with you, we pour into your life, we mentor you. There are many people that just need someone to make missions and we are giving you materials and, and allowing you to come alongside and be a part of the missions work that we do. That's what comes along with the partnership. And then all the increase that comes to your household and in your family, because there is a very special blessing behind supporting missionaries and missions. So we'd love to have you on our team. I just believe that our team will be so much better if you came alongside us. So we welcome you and there's a place for you. Well, I think that's all we got for today. We're so excited. We're going to be doing her voice. I need everybody this morning, pay close attention. Go to uh, www.hervoice.myshopify.com. We need boreholes, guys. We need borehole for the children. And all week long, we're going to be petitioning and uh, I don't want to say raising money, but believing God for though for God to speak to some of you to help us with boreholes. They, we, the children cannot be without water when they shut the water down, like it's happened in South Africa. They've been without water for over five days, now probably getting close to seven days. Now Ashton can attest to that, that when you have your own borehole, just like when the electricity is down and you have your own solar, then you don't have a problem. So we're trusting God that there's someone today. There may be people in the room right now, and maybe this is your first time and you have clean water or you have water, period. Uh, can you imagine what it's like to go day after day after day with no water? We don't want that for our mission houses and we don't want it for the children as well. So we're asking if there's, maybe there's 10 people in the room right quick before we hop off. There may be 10 people, no one's under pressure, but on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, there may be 10 people that are saying, the nation right now, especially in the region that we're in that are without water in that region, we want to help bring water and to bring a borehole, dig a borehole so we can have water when there is no water for the children that can be water. Can I get 10 people this morning in the room or on Facebook that will help us because it's going to cost us $10,000 for the borehole and for the rest of the week, we're believing God for that. We will have it actually that 10,000 covers two properties. We will have it in Jesus name. We're trusting God. Is there anybody that can help us with $100 today? for the poor hole. And you know what we're gonna do? You're gonna see everything on Facebook. You're gonna see everything from the time they're drilling it to the time of the completion. The same thing we did with the solar panels, the same thing we did with the air cons, we did with the houses, we've done with every single part. Do we have anyone that can help us this morning with $100? Raise your hand if you can, it's all for missions. Raise your hand if you can help us. I think I see a hand raised. Richard, is your hand raised again? I see. Can you help me out, Erica, with your Cecile and Pam, you guys? I don't do good with that part. Let's see what we have. Let's knock this out right quick. Let's knock this out right quick. Facebook, we extend the same invitation to you to help us provide water. We need water in South Africa. Please help us. And then Instagram, you can help us. Can someone watch for Instagram and can someone watch for Facebook? Also, there may be someone on YouTube that says, I may not have a hundred, but I want to give something. Everybody in the room, you may not have a hundred, but you want to sow something towards water, having water. Uh, there was a whole break, a break in a main water line 
in that whole region. And so there was, we, it's been without water almost seven days now, right, Ashton? Can you unmute Ashton so they can hear coming you coming to us right from South Africa? Can they hear you? Or can you hop in the room to attest to this? While Ashton's getting in place to attest to what's happening in South Africa without the water, can we give, and Michael, I'm sure you can tell them too as well, the power of having your own borehole. That's a very powerful, mm -hmm. yeah. We're gonna send a hundred dollars. Thank you well. so much. Thank you. Well, there's our first one hundred dollars coming from Namibia. Can the rest of you guys help me? Doctor Bell, you real quick. So there's three people that have their hand raised. Do you want me to bring them to stage? Uh, we for those people that are raising their hand for the hundred dollars for the borehole to help us, you go to patriciabailey.org. You go to patriciabailey.org and you can give there. If you go to my profile, you can see how you can give as well. Only if they want to come to the stage. I don't want to put anybody under, you know, some people like to be silent givers. Do we have so that means if uh, with the three people that you counted was one of those people counting Pastor Michael as well or? No, it was one other person in the okay. queue, but they put their hand okay. down. In the queue, we have Marvereen Davis and Jean Peoples. I'll go ahead and invite them. Okay. Everyone is helping us. I'd like to get a count on how many we have so far. If you can help us to bring water. I was hoping Ashton, can you unmute Ashton on Zoom so we can hear? We heard from Michael talking about the importance of having water when the water is shut down. Just think you need water to brush your teeth. You need water to take a bath. You need water to cook your food. Can we hear from you, Ashton? And how yep. I really was trying to find out how many days it's been without water. Sure, I think it's been probably we're on the seventh or eighth day now. Uh, and without what does it look like without water? I mean, it's really tough because you know you can't have a bath. You can't. I mean, there's no water to brush your teeth. There's no water to do anything. No, you can't cook or anything. And um, you know the borehole would be so. Um, it it would really help because in times like this, when there's issues with the water and stuff like that, you know you can. You know, you're still able to pull borehole from the uh, water from the ground. And yeah, it's just been really tough. I mean, imagine any one of you that are on the line, you just imagine you living without any water now going on seven or eight days with zero water and you open the tap, there's not even a drop anymore because the pipes have dried up. And can you imagine children? Children need water. They need water to drink. They need water to bathe. They need water to brush their teeth. And we're going to make sure that, they, that we have water boreholes at the Mission House, as well as the Eco Village, we're determined. So let's see what we have this morning. Michael started us out with, and I want to also say any amount will help. $10, $5, $25. Go to patriciabailey.org and you can hit the donate button, or you can give by way of Cash App, PayPal. You'll see all that information down in my profile. Uh, can pa Val and Pam and Cecile and you and uh, Erica help us? Let's see account and help us find out where we are. Where are we, Erica? Okay, so um, we have one more person in the queue, which is Jean, but she's not coming up. And then we have Marvereen on the stage. I wanna go ahead and hear from her. Okay. Oh, just please count me in. I'm thankful to help. Okay, thanks so much, darling. Anybody, so I'm trying to, when I say where are we, I'm trying to find out how many we have. Who old do we have so far this giving? How close are we? I'm sorry, I wasn't keeping up. Val or Cecile, were you guys able to? Yes, I'm counting. I'm counting seven so far. Okay, so we need, we're trying to get at least three more people that can help us this morning. Instead of it being three people giving a hundred, can we get six people to give fifty, or can some people just say, "Hey, we heard uh, the need of the water. I can give twenty-five. I can give five. I can give ten. And watch everything we everything we do. You can see on Facebook Live. You'll see us digging the borehole. We're just trusting God this morning. Can we get a few more people to help us? That means we only need three hundred more dollars for today. Okay, so Pam just texted me and said Jean Peoples mm -hmm. gave two hundred. Okay, so we only need uh, two hundred more dollars. Okay, for this borehole. All the missionaries going over all to try to see if they can get five or ten dollars because they're going to need that water when they get ready to take a shower in the mission house. We only need two hundred more dollars. I'm, I'm counting nine. Okay. Total. Okay. And Gene is included in that. Okay, thank you. So that means we only need a hundred dollars left. Can four people give twenty-five? Can we only need a hundred? And maybe some person say, you know what, I got that one hundred. That's the first part of the the first grand we need for our borehole. Who is this? Uh, this is somebody. So Tia now, Kenny just joined. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so we got our 10. It seemed like somebody else I just pinged in. I don't know who that was that came up to the floor. Is there anybody else that want to make sure we didn't miss anyone? Any of anybody else that wanted to give on any amount? Raise your hand. Because 10 is where we're going. So on day number one, we've got that. Okay, so let's thank God for where we are. We are very grateful for people that give towards missions and help us with the projects. If there's anybody that wanted to give that didn't get a chance, raise your hands because we don't want to leave you out. I was sending everyone to hervoice.myshopify.com. If you can go to it on your laptop or put this down, go to hervoice.myshopify.com and you'll see all the African attire and wear and international wear. The Everyone that shops, Phil, can you tell us what you're offering for those? It is the philanthropic arm of the ministry. It's the global trade network part of the ministry. Many of the African inspired and the jewelry and things that were made from women right there in South Africa. As we purchase, you are helping us. The proceeds are going towards the border pole. Well, you're helping us to provide water so you shop with the cause beautiful things can you tell us about some of the things that you're offering right now as they go to her voice dot my yes sure hello everyone um yes her voice dot my shopify.com as dr pat said there are african inspired and african um clothing dresses skirts on tops a variety of things all the clothing is 20% off and 100% of the proceeds assist with the borehole and the projects that we are doing right now. So um, just go visit www.hervoice.myshopify.com, www.hervoice.myshopify.com. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I think that's all we got for today. I want to take this time to thank every single person that helped us for today. Now we only need nine more thousand dollars, guys. And by the time we get to the weekend, we will be there. We will be there. And uh, God will help us and we'll have a big praise testimony. And then you'll start seeing the borehole being drilled and you'll see the water coming out of the tap and you'll see the kids having water. And uh, we thank God. Okay, we're out. We're going to hop over to Prophetess Francina's room, guys. We only got nine more thousand. I need you all. We're going to speak to what we believe. We speak to our challenge and our problem. We say we will have water. We say $9,000 will come in in the name of Jesus. It's coming and it's coming now. We thank you, Father, for the 1,000 that came and for every single person that gave, they gave this morning. May fruit abound to their account. May they help us through this whole mission in South Africa that they will not just stop, but they'll stay and not become weary in doing well for they will reap in due season as we faint not. We thank you, Father God, that we believe that what they make happen for others you will make happen for them and we decree that increase is coming and increases on every side of our life and we thank you that you restore back to them for every person they gave father we thank you that you restore back to them even up to a hundredfold we believe you for this in jesus mighty name until next time this is dr pat bailey i'm so excited make sure you go to hervoice.myshopify.com and i'm sure hoping that we can get some partners and some team members out of this because i would love for us to do and advance the kingdom work together God bless you. And I believe with you on our team, I really believe this, we would really be better together with all of my heart and all of my appreciation. Thank you. And just keep believing with us. You're going to hit the testimony by Friday that we got all the money we needed for the borehole. God bless you. Until next time, this is Dr. Pat. In your hands, Erica. As well as a release of Okay, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We thank you so much for coming on this morning. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Instagram. We bless you, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for coming on. Till next time, this is Dr. Pat. Make sure you stay tuned in for the notifications. We'll be hopping on this week. And thank you for those that were on Instagram, YouTube, and that gave towards the borehole. Thank you so very much. God bless you. <laughs>